Hi, everybody. I just wanted to bring you up to date on some exciting news. Our pool has been approved by the local board of health to open. So we are opening for our camp next week. And the following week, we are opening spots for our swim team members, um, gearing it towards our 10 and younger age group. And we'll also have an additional clinic that we can offer to our 11 and older swimmers too. So I just wanna go over some basic information. I have shared most of this in the uh, 10 and older uh, PowerPoint town hall that I did. I just figured I would record this and you guys can watch at your leisure. And if you have questions, definitely feel free to email me those questions. Um, so first off, why go back to the pool um, in the middle of a pandemic? And again, this is what you are comfortable with. Um, if you're not comfortable coming back, that is completely okay. Um, we'll save your child's spot at this point. Um, but there are some positive things about coming back to the pool that I wanna highlight. So first off, there's minimal touch points, meaning it's not an area where a lot of kids are gonna be grabbing or touching um, parts in the building. Um, we'll have the door open for them to come in. We're gonna use the patio door. I'll go into that more specifically later. Um, they'll come right into the pool area. They'll have a space where they'll put their stuff down. Again, I'll go into more detail in a minute. Um, but basically they might be touching the ladders, um, maybe a door on their way out. So whatever they do touch, we can easily uh, disinfect before another group comes in. Um, we're also swimming in a natural, uh, I wouldn't say natural, but it's a disinfectant um, with chlorine. So um, the CDC and the World Health Organization both feel that chlorine is a disinfectant that would kill the COVID virus. Um, we have new practice process to ensure the safety of the athletes as well as the staff, which I'll go into more detail in a bit. Um, the social distancing of six feet or more can be maintained both in and out of the water during organized swim practices. Um, competitive swimmers mostly exhale blowing bubbles into the water, and this is an activity that improves physical and mental health. So here's additional information from the CDC uh, regarding the COVID virus. Um, they feel that a properly maintained pool um, should inactivate the virus and um, World Health Organization feels the same. Uh, as long as people are able to distance themselves um, and use the, the mask, um, the cloth face covers when they're not in the water um, and disinfecting the touch points, as I mentioned, we should be good. So to ensure the athletes are safe, we ask that they shower at home uh, before and after practice we're going to be taking the temperature of swimmers as they come in, and it needs to be done, uh, sorry, it needs to be under 100.4. We will not read the temperature allowed uh, due to HIPAA restrictions, but we'll just tell them they're okay or clear to come in. I would recommend that you check their temperature at home so that make sure that they're not running a fever before they get here, but we will definitely be screening them at the door with a thermometer and a contactless thermometer. Please use the restroom at home. Bathrooms are really only for an emergency. Um, they should arrive no earlier than five minutes prior to the practice time. Stay in the car until you see that we're ready to start accepting people coming in. They need to wear a cloth face mask until instructed by the coaches and we'll ask them to put their mask in their bag so they don't lose it uh, before they get in the water. And then right after practice, they dry off and immediately put their mask on. They need to wear a suit to and from practice as the locker rooms are not available and the showers are not available. Uh, and they should wear shoes or sandals. So as an athlete comes to our facility, just like we're doing with our offsite locations, we're going to be doing a symptom check and screening questions. Please go over these as the, the younger children probably don't know them as well. Um, but as you have heard in the news, I'm sure, do you have a fever, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, vomiting, diarrhea, new loss of taste or smell, 
chills, muscle aches, or headache? Have you had any of these symptoms since the last time you were here? Been in contact with anyone with those symptoms? Have you potentially been exposed or have reason to believe that you or they, meaning parents, have COVID? Have you traveled to a state outside of New Jersey that is considered a high-risk state within the past 14, 14 days? Because if so, then we need you to self-quarantine. Um, again, we're trying to keep everyone as safe and healthy as possible. Um, we can't do that um, outside of our bubble here, but we're asking you to do your part by wearing your mask, social distancing, washing your hands often, and not travel to a high-risk state. So as swimmers come in to the facility, we're gonna start here with number one. They're gonna wait at the gate. They're gonna wait at um, the, the door as we are socially distancing them and checking their temperature um, and the symptoms. They're gonna sanitize their hands before going into the building. They'll go to an assigned area in the pool that we're able to distance themselves on the pool deck. They'll go to their assigned lane, they'll swim. Then they'll go back to their assigned area where their bag is and their, their personal items. They'll be dismissed following social distancing um, and exit through the same door that they came in. So here's a little more description. Um, five minutes before the practice schedule, um, we don't want anyone hanging out uh, outside of the door until we are ready to receive them. So they should remain in the car with their parent or guardian. Um, athletes will enter through the front patio door, which is all the way to the left under the green awning. It's the fire exit that many of you have seen or have gone out by mistake located right by my office. They must be wearing a uh, cloth face mask and they'll stand at designated spots that we have either chalked out or marked with cones. Parents must remain in the parking lot in case there is an emergency. So we'll do the symptom check. We'll ask the screening questions. They'll sanitize their hands. They'll go to their assigned area. They'll be assigned a lane in a group in their area. There will be an area for their bags um, spaced around the pool, including our pool deck bleachers. Um, anything that's brought in to the facility you're responsible for sanitizing once it's come out. Um, then after they put their things down, they'll go to their lane with a feet first entry, follow the coach's instructions. Uh, as I said, the coaches will be wearing masks until the athletes are in the water and we can properly socially distance from them and us. Uh, unless there's a, an emergency, um, we will then mask up and also during the arrival and departure of the athletes will be masked up. Uh, they will not need any equipment. Uh, we will not be using any equipment, just their, um, and when I mean equipment, I'm talking about snorkels, kickboards, etc. They will need their goggles. They will need a bathing cap um, if they use a bathing cap to, to swim. Uh, they'll go to their assigned area after practice is over. Uh, dry off and the first thing they do is put their mask on. Um, there's no showering and no changing. So if they have towel pants or shorts that they want to throw over their suit um, or t-shirt, that is fine. They'll be dismissed to in ensure that they're being socially distant as they start to exit the facility through the same door that they entered. And we ask that they don't congregate or socialize, um, that they go right to your car or um, for you um, waiting in the parking lot, we'll make sure they're safe getting, getting back to you. So here's a picture of the front awning that I was talking about. This is just, this is just to the left of the main entrance. So the arrow is pointing to that fire exit door that is right across the hall from my office. Um, in the pool, we'll have six swimmers per group. So there'll be one swimmer per lane and they're assigned their lane. Um, we ask that you be flexible with times and protocols as this whole situation is very fluid and things may need to change uh, as more information comes out. And they're going to enter and exit through this doorway. Uh, as I mentioned, they must wear their practice suit to the facilities. Locker rooms are off limits. Athletes will be assigned to smaller groups based upon ability and in order to maintain similar speeds in the lane. 
Um, they'll be twice per week for 30 minutes for practices, and the earliest practice would be at 9.30. Uh, this is dependent upon interest. So we are going to take a, a survey just to see what the interest may be uh, so that we could properly accommodate. There'll be a 15 minute gap in place between the practices to limit the number of people in the facility and also allow us time to properly disinfect any touch points or exposed areas. Uh, the bathroom will be available, but only for emergencies. So please have your child use the bathroom before leaving um, to come to practice. And this is a younger group, but I've said this with the older kids too. Um, if you come, commit to come back, we have the same expectations in regards to attendance and effort. So just be aware of that. Um, we want a good effort if they're here. Um, if someone's complaining that they have a tummy ache and they're not feeling good, they'll be asked to leave immediately. Um, I know sometimes that happens when someone's not really thrilled about getting into the water um, for a practice. Um, so we, unfortunately, we cannot coax them in and talk them through it too much. If they're not feeling well, we're going to ask them to, to leave and return to you as soon as possible. Um, if you do not uh, want to return at this point, completely understand, not a problem. We'll hold your spot on the team. Um, there's no repercussions. We respect everyone's level of comfort through this and we'll work with you when you're ready to return. Um, people have been asking me about the fall and I really don't know at this point where we're going to be. So um, we're, we're looking at things a few weeks ahead and taking it from there. Um, practice prep, uh, preparedness. This is some frequently asked questions that we get. Um, can they come to practice if they're late? No. We have to do the screening, and once the screening's done, door is closed, and we're inside in the pool, so we cannot accommodate anyone that is late. Um, they should not borrow or share any equipment. If someone forgot their goggles, they swim without the goggles. Uh, we can't lend anything out to them, and they can't borrow from a teammate. Um, parents and spectators are not permitted in the facility. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to open our building uh, to everyone, so we're just using it uh, for our our staff that is back and um, and and our our swim team. Um, like I said, camp will be coming in in the afternoon. Risk is there zero risk? Unfortunately, there is some risk, but it is low. As I mentioned, chlorine is a disinfectant. We are going to be um, disinfecting the touch points, um, but we can't guarantee that. You know, they won't be exposed at some point. So just want to make sure that that's clear. For travel, if someone travels outside of the state of New Jersey, it's discouraged. We're following the New Jersey Department of Health rules for running our programs. And as of today, anyone traveling to a high risk state as per New Jersey Department of Health, they must quarantine for 14 days. There's no way for us to track adherence to this or where anyone has traveled. So we ask for your cooperation to ensure everyone's safety and health. Please make the best decision for your family and our program to limit your exposure and keep all safe. Uh, can you carpool? We highly discourage that. Um, where should you park? So as I said, we have camp going on in the back of the parking lot uh, of the Y. So we have staff that parks on the side lot. The upper lot, should be available, but they are talking about offering some fitness classes on the patio where we'll be coming in and also in the upper lot. So it just depends on the day. Most likely you'll be able to park in the upper lot in front of the Y. So the schedule, when will practices start and what time will they be? Uh, we anticipate a July 20th start uh, and we will have pool time beginning at 9.30 in the morning. The last practices will be the week of August 10th, so that's four weeks. We'll have one group on Monday, Wednesday from 9.30 to 10, and then a second group from on Tuesday, Thursday at 9.30, ending at 10. If we have 
a, a low interest in one particular group versus the other and we have room to combine, we will reach out to you to ask if you could possibly move to the other group. So if you do know of a conflict and you absolutely can't change, please make sure you communicate that to me. Uh, what practice group will my child be in? Um, they're going to be based upon similar ability and, and availability. So if we do end up with more interest on a particular day, we, we, we might shift swimmers around to make sure that we have kids in similar ages and abilities together. And the approximate uh, practice fee will be $110. So the next step that you need to do is complete the survey. It's one question, basically asking if you are comfortable in sending your child back to swim and to ask you to leave your last name um, in that survey. There's a question asking for it, just so we know who's, who's, who has responded. And in no way is it binding. If you change your mind, that's okay, but we do want to gauge interest. Then you need to contact Nancy Dunham via email prior to registering. You have to have your membership current for your child in order to be able to sign up. If you don't have that current, then you are not able to sign up. So to contact Nancy, you need to email her nancyd at lhymca.com. The next step is to complete a waiver for each child in order for them to participate. No waiver, no participation, no exceptions. So email the waiver to Jonathan O at lhymca.com. They'll attach that to your child's membership. And then you need to register for the stroke clinic on the WISE website, not the teams, but the WISE. There will be more information about the specific uh, name that you're going to be looking for for that registration um, but that will be available on the WISE website but first survey second membership third waiver fourth register obviously we're very excited to have the kids return to the pool but we want to make sure that everyone's following the guidelines uh, given by the CDC, New Jersey Department of Health, USA Swimming, and the YMCA for the safety of our swimmers and staff, we suggest that you do the following. Uh, discuss with your swimmers the importance of limiting touch points, meaning not grabbing and touching whatever is around them, which is hard for those younger kids. They also need to practice social distancing, learning that they can't come up and hug their teammate or friend that they haven't seen, even though they really, really want to. Um, they really need to practice that social distance. Big bubbles, big bubbles. Um, and lastly, wearing a face mask. They have to have that on coming into the pool area and right up until we invite them into the water. And that's the first thing they're putting it on as soon as they dry their face. If adherence to the guidelines and protocols and the coach's instructions are not followed by a swimmer enough times, the swimmer will be prohibited from attending practices. Safety for the swimmer, staff, and families is our utmost priority. So that brings me to the conclusion of our 10 and under plan. As I mentioned, we will have availability for our 11 and older swimmers to gain additional uh, pool time for 45 minutes, two or three, day, three, two or three days a week. Um, more information will be out once we get more of a feeling as to uh, the interest of that as well. So a lot of this depends on you guys. Um, so we, we hope that you're interested in, in getting your children back. Um, at this point, I feel like we need to limit it to just our team, our current team members. Um, if you have uh, a sibling that has interest, you can contact us, but I cannot guarantee that we'll have room for them at this point. Um, so I will finish up here. As I said, I will include the waivers, the survey, um, and a little more info, information about the, um, 
the cost and the, um, the groups that we're, we're offering. Um, so please make sure you respond quickly. Um, we hope to have registration open July 14th. We're gonna have it open for three days through the 17th so that we have time to assign uh, swimmers to groups if needed. Uh, so thanks for your time. If you have any questions, um, feel free to email them to me, Kira C, K-E-I-R-A-C, at lhymca.com. Thanks all, be safe, be well.